goes another 20 year old. Holy shit, I hate those guys. Gotta hate 20 year olds. Somebody help these 20 It's time to figure it out, Ricky. Yeah. Touch me. Don't touch me. No fucking touch me. What up, players? Are you now tuning to another episode of Too Many Jams, Toronto's premier 20-year-olds podcast? You're joined by your host, Travis McKenna, Robbie Davidson. How are we doing today, Robbie? Hit us with the intro. Early morning, as my good friend Kevin, our roommate, always likes to say, our producer, rise and grind. Rise and grind, money never sleeps. <laughs> uh it also saves us a little bit of our beer budget because we don't drink when we do when we do them yeah, in I mean, the morning. It's a little too early. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, you're on too many jams. It's a show about all things twenty year old. With help from friends, experts, and our own personal experiences, we hope to shed some light on those things that leave our age group lost and confused. We have some sponsors. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. Uh, it used to be just our own jewelry company, but now we have a beer sponsor. True history beer. God, it's good beer. Isn't it awesome? And what a summer they've had so far. Just blowing up in LCBOs. Our whole friend group's all drinking it. Um, you know, if it wasn't weird to drink it in the morning, I'd be drinking it right now. Maybe I am in this coffee cup. Maybe they should make a true history coffee. No, it's just um we've had it on we've had them on a few previous episodes. If you haven't heard about them yet, uh, you haven't listened in about three, four months. And uh, even a little, a little while back, because uh, we had Matt talking about it, you know, way before, like spring. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah. So it, it's basically a few buddies of ours that started a beer company, and it turned out to be Unreal Beer. And it just hit me like, why wouldn't you drink your friend's beer if it was good? And then we started chatting, and uh, you know, we got it on the podcast, and. So True History, follow them on uh, True History Brewing on Instagram and Facebook and our other sponsors, Wrists and Ride Jewelry. If you want to support us directly, that is uh, that is our company. We sell jewelry for men, Tam made in Toronto. As Robbie gets a phone call, good thing the computer's muted because that would have been a classic. Uh, is there anything anything more classic? It's my mom though. Uh, yeah, so Rob, Rob's getting his phone call. We, we started muting the computer now because it's inevitable. Once you hit record on the podcast, Rob gets a phone call. Mom, I will call you back. But also on the true history note, they're having a little shaker yeah. coming up. And um, I don't know if it's, it might be invite only kind of thing. <laughs> so I won't disclose too many details. But, you know, if you're, if you're, if, if you feel like you're on the in and you haven't got the invite yet, send us a message. And, you know, and we'll we'll get you on that guest list because you know we got that kind of pull in the industry. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So, so yeah, they're having a little shaker, kind of like a launch party, even though they've been launched for a while, but more just like, oh, we're here party. You know, here they're they're queer, they're out of the closet. We here. They're making good beer, and when they drive the car, they make sure to steer. So mm, nice. <laughs> yeah. So true history. If, if, uh, if you're interested in them and you feel like, uh, you'd be interested to go to something like that and you haven't seen any info about it, reach out to us. We'll see what the deal is. And for wrist and rye, go on there. Jams 15 gets you 15% off. It's the only sale that store does because that's, sh- it just doesn't go on sale because it's expensive to make, but check it out. Wrist dash rye.com. And let's get into it, Rob, because, um, there's actually a decent amount to talk about. We've been uh, we've been watching some cool shows. Yep. We've been listening to some cool podcasts. Yep. We've been working ourselves into a work hole, and Check. I feel like I can't escape. Check. And Check. things are just buzzing. Um, let's start from the top there. Okay. Cool shows. What show have we been watching lately? Euphoria. How good is it? It's kind of fucked, but good. It makes you feel a little anxious. Anxious, exactly. Yeah, but a killer show. But so it, well done. It's about high school kids. It's kind of like if Degrassi wasn't cheesy. Yeah, and modern. And they did a whole bunch of drugs. Yeah, and like, and it, if there was a lot of dicks. In so Degrassi. many dicks in this one, man. Yeah. How many dicks do you think we've seen in the first four or five episodes? Collectively, I've seen about thirty. More. More than the thirty, there was one episode forty-seven. Where dicks. There was maybe twenty dicks in one scene. Like you know, 
picture a classic locker scene in high school, you know, where they take you through and just lads shooting the shit, you know. That, now remove all of their clothing and it was it was Dick's the the scene was to emphasize one of the characters uh was it either discomfort with Dix? He hated how he hated how many people were nude around him, remember? Yeah. And to highlight his discomfort, it was a scene with oh, so many dicks. Yeah. Com- big ones, small ones, all obviously yeah. all obviously soft, flapping around, and like the characters just walking like slow mo through like just dicks flying around. One one ep- that was one scene of one episode. Yeah. So yeah. So way more dicks, you know? Um I spoke to Kevin about this yeah. the other night. You, as you would. When you see dicks, who do you speak to? Kevin. Right. <laughs> Kev, what do you think of them? Good size, girth, <laughs> you know. I think of these dicks. <laughs> well managed. Uh, <laughs> so I've, uh, I have I came to a bit of a conclusion on it. Or I've, I have a little bit of theory, actually. Okay. A, a little yeah. bit of a theory. Hit me with that dick theory. Okay. So uh, when was the last time you saw a TV show or a movie with like went full dick like that honestly i can't think of it yeah. because i'm a stupid brain yeah but a lot actually i'm gonna say a lot if your theory goes against that i feel like in recent years i've yeah. been seeing way more dicks i've never seen a vagina i yeah. see tons of dicks especially comedies they like to throw a dick in there in recent years i've seen a lot of dicks okay i mean that's uh okay so I've yeah I I can recount a lot of movies where you've seen bush, or like like vagina like a lot of bush bush never vagina for, for sure yeah bush um and bush I mean titties obviously oh you see tons of titties lots is, of titties right yeah um my theory is that you either have to like if if you're if you're making something like uh if you want to make like a movie or a TV show that is like sort of wants to show any body part you have to choose whether you're going to go dick or vagina in your show otherwise people just start to consider like because if you show both they start showing like a whole it's bunch porn. of dicks in vaginas it's porn right so it's like as as uh whatever way you want to artistically show it you gotta sh- you gotta either choose are no. you going dicks or are you going vaginas I, I, different theory because you're right yeah but it's you're close okay because i know what you're saying it can't you can't show dicks and vaginas or else it's porn but yes you can so and, and that's what i think that show is doing it's like they've cho- they've chosen to go dicks so they're showing dicks and that's you haven't seen any vagina on the show i can improve upon this theory though okay let's hear okay it. vaginas are in themselves pornographic if you're seeing a vagina yeah it's porn i've never seen a vagina in a movie but what have you also never seen really in a movie? Hard dick. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? Okay. The hard dick is pornographic. Yeah. Soft dicks are funny. Yeah. No one's threatened by a soft dick. No. You couldn't do anything with it. It's just flapping in the wind. It's like titties. Titties are just bouncing around. Yeah. They're not like, they're not in themselves pornographic. Like in Canada, you can walk around with your top off. It's it's not supposed to be that sexual. I don't think you see vagina because there's no like hard vagina, soft vagina. It's like once you see vagina, it's porn. Unless there's bush kind of covering it up. Do you know what I mean? Uh, okay. You never see hard dicks. Yeah. The odd time maybe. Yeah. You see like a hard dick in underwear or something. Like for comedies mostly is when you do this. Yeah. Or like if they're trying to show that he's got an erection. But you, you never see a fully hard dick in a, in a movie. But but I but I also think in that show, you know, it's like the way we're explaining it, we're going, Oh, there's like there's so much dick in it or there's like there's you know, there's like there's the odd titty that shows. But dick to titty ratio is very high dick. Very high dick. But but never the commentary is never like, Oh, this it's like watching a porn. Because they're soft. Yeah, because they're soft. But I think if there was the aspect Dude, I think if you see a vagina, period, it becomes pornographic. That's what I'm saying. Okay. It's not about... No show shows just vagina and no dick. Because you don't see vagina, period, in shows. Period. Okay. Pun intended. No, uh, I see... Uh, yeah. When? When no, have you seen a vagina? More. Like, dude, entourage, like HBO's been doing it for years. Like, Entourage... You've seen 
only bush, which is the equivalent of soft dick. You've never seen a vagina, the lips, ever, because that's pornographic. I'm trying to think. I, I'm, I'm saying that's, that's it. Bush yeah. and titties for girls. Yeah, soft dick. Soft dicks for guys or uh, hard dick in clothing. Yeah, okay. Well, I mean, this show is making a push, though, for showing dicks in shows soft because, dick, like, yeah. soft dick, like, they're they're trying, they're pushing the needle on this. It, but the, and the thing is, is uh, the dick to titty ratio is not only high, dick. The titty ratio you see actually more transgender titty than you yeah. see non-transgender titty. So it's very, I'd say it's very one-sided, and nothing nothing wrong with that. Refreshing. Yeah. But you know me, I like to see a uh, titty. So thanks I mean, for sprinkling yeah, it in it there. It gives it gives you a little taste. Another, another comment is, I don't know what it was like for you in high school, but I went to an all guys school. It's never dicks never out. No, ch no change. No one. There was no change rooms where people were just whipping. I don't think I don't remember seeing a single dick in high school. Dude, I went to a co-ed high school, and I remember people were much more reserved. Um. In the change rooms, like lockers maybe it's an American thing, an American change room. Like as an adult, you go yeah. to Good Life, yeah. prepare to see uh, that entire scene in the show's worth of dicks, yeah, in person for oh, sure. Yeah. Oh yeah, and not the dicks you want to see either. These aren't hot actor dicks. Yeah, these are a lot older non-actor dicks that you don't like seeing. Personally, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. <laughs> but it's uh it's well, a, you know, I guess in um like playing hockey and sports. Never. Really? Only in, after only only uh after high school. No, in in high school when you like start showering after hockey, I remember. I mean, guys were still a little bit more Nobody showered after hockey really. Really? No. Like if they did, I didn't see it because I'd be changed and I'd be out of there. No, oh, no dude, really... I was always like last one out of the dressing room. Well, that's just you, dude. I'd, I'd hang around. I'd, I'd yeah. shoot the shit. Then I'd go shower. And... Dude, I, I don't like showering in hockey dressing rooms. I don't understand that. Oh, do you want me to explain it to you? I explain it it's to me. It's the grossest fucking room I've ever seen. People it's not piss. that bad. It's disgusting, dude. It is literally disgusting. It smells like piss. People piss in there. It's filthy. It's 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 so gross, and I'm like, it's nothing about dicks at all because I sh I sh have to shower there the odd time if I'm going to something after hockey. N no reservations about showering the dress room or like if uh, if it's just convenient, I'll do it. If I have a choice, I'm gonna shower in my beautiful home shower. Why wouldn't I? I I don't know. I'm. I just. I like to get it done out of the way. I hate going home like after I've just been so sweaty, like putting my clothes on, and I get home, and then I have to shower. It's like it's right there. I've. It's never really phased me. You might have a different tolerance for disgusting showers then, because. But but you're you're making them out like dude warts on the bottom of your feet. Do you have flip flops? No. No. It's disgusting. I've never once gotten any sort of foot infection or wart. I or got anything. athlete's foot when I was at. Uh, working a summer job from the showers, and I was like, "Why? Why do I?" And I got a I got a wart from when I did uh, swim lessons. Okay, so you've had a little bit more. Yeah, they're disgusting. You're you're very lucky to not have anything, and why even fucking play with it? I, and when I do shower at hockey, I bring flip flops. Yeah. Okay. It's gross. I don't. Know, you know. Pee 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 pee, out of the question. Pee pee out of the question. Different strokes for different folks, as you but, always say. But the show what in the show. Um, the whole thing is, is like, it creates this anxiety when you watch it. And the, normally I don't like shows that make me uncomfortable because I'm like, I'm just chilling on my couch, leave me alone. But it's captivating. But it's, it's, it's also fitting because I was, high school is such an anxious time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it, it, like it did bring back feelings of like, just feeling weird about stuff and not knowing anything. So I'm like, this I, is that's kind of accurate. Another comment about the show is, um, and I don't know how accurate it is, but I have, um, I f I feel like it might be a little more popular now. Is the amount of drugs or harder drugs that yeah. they do in the show? It's I f 
like our kids doing crazy yes. drugs in high school now? Dude, like I feel yeah. like they've become a lot more normalized past just like smoking weed. No one was doing hard drugs that I knew of in high school. No. Um, the younger generations, remember when we were, we were running the fraternities, younger kids were coming in doing drugs that, that we only heard about in university. Yeah. Straight out of high school and the stories we'd hear, even the school I went to. Yeah. After I graduated, kids were getting kicked out of formals for doing cocaine and stuff like that. And, and it's, that's something that like, if someone was doing it in high school, they were a fringe group. Somebody I didn't even see or know was doing yeah. it. Yeah. Now it's like they're doing cocaine in high school the same way that it felt normalized in like fraternity scene yeah so just like they're getting younger and younger so yeah they're doing a shitload of drugs comparatively to like what what we did we like we didn't do any hard drugs in in high school i didn't see it yeah so yeah comparatively they're doing a hell of a lot more i'm not saying every kid now in high school is doing hard drugs no but yeah that's the, true. the hard partiers yeah and, and one thing that remains consistent though in the show and I, I think forever like if you are if you're ever gonna shoot a movie where you got stereotypical high school <laughs> you need the asshole jock asshole dating, jock. dating the hot cheerleader yeah. girl but they put a real dark twist on it not to ruin too much of the show they over exaggerate a lot of these high school elements yeah like the asshole jock is actually kind of a twisted almost psychopath yeah and like the pretty girl is super like looks like she could they couldn't have picked a more like bimbo-esque looking oh, actress yeah. yeah like airhead uh kind of stereotype and then they really exaggerated like the uh, the every everything in high school like the awkward kind of parties are now like exaggerated but that's what makes for good television you wouldn't want to watch Mm -hmm. like our normal parties where not many crazy things happen but it's definitely exaggerated but it, it does a cool job of capturing the anxious feeling mm -hmm. and like the feeling of regret when you fuck up or like do something in high school is so real totally and the soundtrack is Dope. fantastic and it's just the the, the the cinematography unreal oh yeah it's I mean, everything about the show go watch it go it's, watch it's it it's really good it'll fuck your night up um, yeah. next show just I'm gonna give it a brief mention yeah. Just started Top Boy. Oh, okay. That's the one Drake brought back. How is it? Okay, so... I've heard good things. <clears throat> I, I watched 10 minutes of it. I turned it off. Really? And eh? uh, I couldn't understand it. And then I was telling my buddies who were big into it, and I was like, yeah. oh, like, I really wanted to like it, but I, I couldn't understand it. Do you have to, like, pass a threshold? Nope. Subtitles. Hot tip from a buddy. Really? Why? Because what's can't the understand accent slang. that they're... Or it's slang it's or... A, it's a mix between... British and British Street, which is like Jamaican and like other like, like what Drake tries to incorporate. E oh yeah, but like they just like deeper. Like some of the main characters are Jamaican, yeah, with a British accent, yeah. So you know the Jamaican accent is hard enough to understand, yeah. Uh, add the British accent to that accent, and then everyone they're talking to has like a thick grime, like British accent, uh, with all their slang words that we don't understand. You you don't know what's going on, so you put on the subtitles, and you make it through one episode, and then you start to learn the characters, and then sucked in. I was sucked in. Oh, so you're in now? Yeah. Okay. I really liked it. Yeah. But I I don't know like nothing crazy's happened yet to even talk about. Yeah. Uh, other shows, Peaky Blinders. Yeah. Still haven't watched it. Oh man. If that show doesn't make you want to smoke cigarettes and drink whiskey all day <laughs> long and be a be a gangster, yeah, like you you almost you almost can't go. There's not a single scene without a cigarette in it. Like watch it with a notebook and and be like, you could count how many scenes don't have a cigarette in it. Yeah, it it'd be like two maybe per episode, <laughs> and it'd be like a, a car scene or something with no people in it. If yeah. if he's chilling, if yeah. people are talking, there's a cigarette. 99 percent of the time nice they always drink whiskey yeah they drink when they're pregnant wow they, they just beat people up they smoke when they're pregnant they just like it's a big swing and dick show i love it and are they still making a new season like it's still coming out with i think stuff? it's not canceled yet the season i just watched season five is the most recent one and i'm, I'm a few episodes into it mm -hmm. it's just such a good show yeah recommend but i, I started re-watching breaking bad again oh yeah 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 
I stopped after like three seasons into that. Yeah, I don't know how or why you did that. Uh, I just got, I just kind of forgot about it. Got bored. Because <laughs> um, the the movie just came out, which um, oh, you probably haven't seen. Someone told me this. You can confirm or deny it. Okay. Did all the characters gain a lot of weight and look really different? And they're trying to like recap scenes that happened in history, and like they just look a lot different than they did in the show. I didn't find that at all. Really? Yeah. I mean, maybe I just wasn't. Wasn't Pinkman a little thick? Pinkman was a little thick. Okay. <laughs> but, like, I've seen pictures of Aaron Paul just, like, you know, captured celebrity photos recently, and he looks kind of same size he, as he was. In the movie? Uh, no, sorry, like, previously. He looks like his same, like, build he was a himself. he was skinny face guy in the show when i first started watching the first three seasons yeah and some clips in the movie are supposed to be from before that and yeah whatever well i mean i guess like there's only so much they can do like the show started coming it came out like 10 years ago i too. disagree though actors change shape all the time for roles yeah if you're if you're filming a movie be like okay you have to get back into this shape when we shot these scenes i don't think it was an issue well someone made a comment won't name any names. I don't know. It rhymes with our roommate, Schmishton Schmanschmala. Oh, is she even like a Breaking Bad person? No, she just mentioned that a lot of characters looked a lot different for her. I don't know. Was I, it her? I, I disagree. Or was it somebody else? I think it was her. Um, but yeah, so would you watch Copper Drop, that movie? If you're a Breaking Bad fan, yes. What if you watch three seasons with your ex-girlfriend and then stop watching it? And I'd leave it. Okay. To be honest, you, you'd be lost. Like you need, you'd be lost. <laughs> you've been weird. Um, you need the last couple to follow up on. Plus, also, it's it's more for a Breaking Bad fan. Like it wouldn't appeal to anyone outside of that because, um, just I I don't know. I I found it wasn't. It, it was it was more of like a. It seems like a filler episode in a season than like a season finale is, is well, what I compared it to because I, I was expecting I'm like wow they're making a movie like a couple years after this is going to be like a season finale like two hour episode where just all the shit like yeah. goes down and it's gonna be so action-packed it was more just like oh like you know you could have put this like mid-season mid through to like satisfy you know the regular watcher well, what's, to what's get wild is one week episodes of shows are so long now yeah that making movies not even that wild like an episode's an hour. Yeah. So if you make an hour and a half movie, it's an episode and a half. If you make a two hour movie, it's just two episodes back to back. Yeah. Nothing crazy. Not no. a lot of time really to use. Yeah. You'd have to go super fast in order to like tie up entire seasons worth of stuff. Yeah. You have to be like, hey, this happened here. And then cut to this scene, then cut to that scene and be like fucking tying bows on everything. Uh, but hey, you liked it. It was good. Liked it. Yeah. That's uh, is, is that is that all the media st think, media uh, world we're in right now? I think that's about it. The uh, the speaking of other things that we watched, uh, oh, and, and speaking Dog. of Schmicht and Schmanschmella, yeah. Chris and Mandela, she uh she watched a vegan documentary with me last week. Oh yeah yeah, it called Game Changers. Okay, dude. Copper drop. Do I gotta see it? You gotta see it. Okay. It's very good at convincing. Okay. Against meat. It's sorry. It's very convincing against meat. Okay. It uh, base. Uh, I won't ruin it. Yeah. It's shot really well, and it's and it's like a good documentary. Like even if you don't care to change your diet. Yeah. It's compelling because I talked in I think last episode about a documentary I, I watched called Forks Over Knives on the on the the weekend before last yeah, episode. Yeah. It uh, that was a really sciencey documentary. And it, and it went into all these studies of why plants are better. And <clears throat> this documentary was better because it was like science was in there, but it was really about all these athletes, high performance athletes that went vegan and their experiences. Mm -hmm. So it's always cool or it's like when you see dope athletes doing stuff, you want to do it sort of deal. Like if you see celebrities doing stuff, you want to do it. When you see dope athletes being like, monstrous men i'm talking like the the biggest hunkiest shredded bodybuilders swedish too blonde just be like yeah 
I don't eat meat. <laughs> <laughs> was that German or was that Swedish? <laughs> I don't know. Somewhere over there. But uh, and the the women in it were like Olympians and sprinters and all this shit that uh, before and after meat were like before meat I was here and after yeah. meat I was fucking winning medals like blowing people away all this shit oh that's interesting so like they they measured it by their performance performance how they feel how how late into their careers are able to perform yeah compared to their competitors and then it showed all these different athlete stories fighters football players basketball weightlifters across the board and it it showed uh, their stories and then it's sprinkled facts in between and it's like these are facts that anytime you tell someone not to eat meat they say like you don't get enough iron iron you don't get enough protein yeah so in between all these stories it'd be like i don't need any iron yeah you you have hemochromatosis yep um so you could easily switch to uh to plant-based yeah but kid okay, to, <laughs> to sum it up though it, it gave these cool stories and then it's sprinkled in these facts in between the stories, which is basically any fact that in my head I held from yeah. listening to like Joe Rogan being like, I need B12. Yeah. I don't think you can get all the protein from plants. Yeah. How much iron? What about BCAs? What about testosterone and, and estrogen and soy? Each one of those was addressed in between these stories. Yeah. With, with facts. Yeah. Obviously super biased towards veganism. Yeah. But, Regardless, they were compelling. Phone call number two for Rob. We should get a phone call counter in the in the things. Yeah, Rob yeah. phone call count two. I'll put Classic. It, I'll put it in the YouTube video here. Care is now calling. It's always it's family members and your girlfriend. Yeah. They call nonstop. You guys have a fucking like you play broken telephone with each other all day. Yeah. No. Man, I've I've tried calling. Um I don't know. You need an alert. You need a family alert, a family group, text message group. Do you have that? Yeah. Hey, going into a podcast. <laughs> Maybe. I don't want to send a message like that, though. They're like, You'd rather just miss their call, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'll call back. It's just like, it's just annoying. They don't need to know that I'm going to be. <laughs> I think they do. <laughs> they fucking definitely do, dude. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm expecting a call from your dad next. We'll see if I, if I, if I predict that. Keep you that. guys updated. But yeah, check it. It's called Game Changers. And uh, we just watched upstairs. Joe Rogan talked a little bit about it. Yeah, and, like, he tried spo- to I, shut it down. I don't know who his guest was, but this guy on YouTube, what was his name? Mick the Vegan on YouTube. Mick the Vegan was breaking it down. Um, and he obviously was a little bit triggered. <laughs> yeah, so triggered. But you know what? He was nice enough about being triggered. Yeah, but you could tell he he just he couldn't. He couldn't wait to just fucking disprove every point. Well, you know what? Imagine if, made. imagine if you're a vegan and you've done your research and you have your facts. And I haven't done my research, so I I don't know. But yeah. imagine if you have. And imagine if the facts are blatant that veganism is better, like this documentary yeah. says. Yeah. And then Joe Rogan is like the antichrist of veganism. He's out there with the biggest following. Yeah. Such a trustworthy guy. And he's just like, no, man, v- veganism? No, fuck that. I hunt elk. Everyone should hunt elk. And yeah. like all this shit, like it would be triggering. It'd be like if you were a conservative and like Trudeau comes in and is like, it's people kind, not mankind. And you're like, fuck off, dude. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, he's okay. leading the country and you just have different beliefs. Yeah, I hear you. So he was triggered, sure. But what was he saying? He, oh, fuck, what were the points he was making? I guess some of the things Joe Rogan said was, um, oh, uh, one of the facts that he said on the podcast was that he was talking about when vegans get drunk, and uh, I guess he inflated this number a bit. He said a bit. Joe Rogan said <laughs> he's, he's, he said ninety percent of vegans when they get drunk uh, resort back to eating meat or something like that, and then this guy pulls up the study. And it was like, it was, it was, it was like survey monkey or something bullshit like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some site that like d- doesn't even exist anymore. And it was like, I think it was combined vegetarians and vegans. And it was one third. And it was one third. And yeah. the study doesn't even exist anymore. Yeah. I, you know what? 
I've I've said on podcasts before, I was like, Joe Rogan's my North Star. Yeah. As is in my mind, he's talked to so many experts. How could he be misinformed? Do you know what I mean? He's talked to diet experts, sleep experts, drug experts, yeah. sports experts, space experts. Like the smartest people in the world yeah. he's had on. Yeah. Authors, scientists, doctors. He's had everyone. Everyone. How can he be misinformed? So he was like kind of like my North Star. Yeah. He, the, the, the great accumulator of, of knowledge. He should live according to all... The, these experts say so if he's eating meat I thought you know I should eat a little meat and I thought what he said was right he's like no meat isn't bad it's factory farmed meat this like tortured awful meat that's bad for you but elk meat is like a miracle for the human body and I'm sitting there like wow I want elk meat <laughs> yeah we're gonna find some elk meat around here and the, and he spits these stats throughout episodes but I've never once watched an episode of Joe Rogan be fact checked yeah. And this is the first time I've seen a guy be like, this is how egregious he over exaggerates shit. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, maybe, maybe Joe's a bit of a biased guy. <laughs> you think? Like, guy loves hunting. He might just like murdering, dude. I th- yeah. I, I don't know what to make of it. Like, I, I think for me, too, is, if if I watch that, I pro I mean it'll it'll be cool, it'll be informative, but I probably won't change my diet. I'm not really looking to I think you will. You really? Yeah. Yeah. I think you will. Okay. I it's that good at convincing. It's that compelling. I yeah. Think. I think you will unless you take the time to go and try to counter all the arguments they make. Yeah, they make a pretty bulletproof case. Okay, I, I, you know what? Okay, so for me, I think the the one thing that like like some days I'll eat. Actually, you know what? Forget that. I think the one thing you'll eat what? Uh, no, I was I was just gonna say some some days I eat more veggie, fruit, plant based meals. Yeah, and stuff, and I can, I can notice I you grow titties. Yeah, exactly. Oh shit! It's whack, man. <laughs> it's insane. Like beat cups. <laughs> um, no, I I notice I I I don't fill up as much, and I think that's just because I'm I I don't know enough about the stuff to eat to get like the proper. Um, Are you kidding? You don't feel you don't. Feel, I feel the opposite. I feel so full on plants that I actually hate eating plants because I'm worried I I, I can't get the right amount of calories in me because of how full I get. I well, I get I get full, but it's a different type of it's a different type of full, um, because I do I do like eating lots of fruits and veggies, and um, I think there's a bit of a gap for you know people advocating for uh wanting more people to go vegan or vegetarian Mm -hmm. at least, and um, people who are considering it but don't really know how to make that shift well i'm not a vegan yeah i said you change your diet yeah but but even even changing your diet to like um, i i guess i guess it is just like a little bit of homework and stuff um it's just because like your whole life you're taught you know like okay standard meal you get some you get some meat you get some vegetables and like maybe like a salad or or like you know they talk about that it's like, like a three course thing that's what you grow up knowing and it's like your whole your whole um, meal plan is based around these kind of things, right? And to like step outside of that, it's I guess it's just a little bit of work Dude, and they some used research. To do, they but, used to dip cigarettes in mercury. They used to think smoking was good for you. Like if you base your diet based on what they did in history, yeah, you're it's it does it's, it's a non argument. The they talk about that stuff in the documentary. That's why I'm telling you it's convincing. Is because everything. A meat eater like yourself and myself yeah. used to say, yeah, exactly like that. Yeah, they bring up so anything you th- you could think of of why yeah. you wouldn't switch. Yeah, same with me. They brought up in the documentary. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'm not I, like no, no, I, I'm not, and I'm, I'm not saying I'm an ignorant person being like, oh, like you know, fully gas it. I'm I'm just uh, no. My what I'm what I'm saying is, I was the same. Yeah, I had a a 
an array of loosely researched reasons why I'm still eating meat. Mm -hmm. And this podcast hit, or this documentary hit every one of those. And I'm like, dang. So the, I didn't even have a leg to stand on anymore. Okay. I'll so, watch it. I'll so watch it. that's why I'm not, and I'm not trying to convince you either way yeah. because I still eat meat, but this is what, this is what I got out of it. Undoubtedly, it's better for you. Undoubtedly. Eat a plant, plant, plant-based diet without a doubt. I, between the documentaries I saw before and this one with real world athletes yeah, and the science that they sprinkled in without a doubt, it's better for you. This is this is my opinion on meat now after watching it, and I didn't I didn't research against any of the facts that they showed me. I took the facts that they showed me as, if somewhat presented in a biased way, they were accurate facts. If that makes sense, yeah. Um, is that meat is bad in every capacity compared to plants? Meat is not a at all healthy the same way it's universally agreed that cigarettes aren't healthy that alcohol isn't healthy that sugar isn't healthy meat is in that same category it doesn't mean you can't go your whole life drinking alcohol and have a good full life you can't go your whole life um, eating sugar and not have a good life some people smoke till the day they die it's unanimous so that it's not good for you. No one would say, hey, make sure you get your cigarette. Make sure you get your fucking two beers in today. Yeah. It's universally agreed that it's bad for you. So my new position on meat is meat's a treat. You don't want to remove it from your life because you like it. And there's no other there's no other reason. It doesn't do anything for you. It doesn't make your doesn't make your testosterone more. It doesn't make you work out bigger. It doesn't make your endurance more your vitamin and there's there wasn't a single argument for meat it makes your arteries worse it leads to heart disease it it's linked to cancers diabetes all this shit they showed in the in the documentary direct immediate effects of having meat for a day versus having plants for a day to stuff like your uh your erections your uh immediate physical performance uh, they said if you eat a meat-based meal, yeah, you are shown to have a thirty percent immediate reduction in physical performance than a plant-based meal. What like physical and what capacity? Endurance. Okay. Yeah. So like that, like if a boxer was able to go ten rounds, um, immediately after a meat-based diet, you know, he'd be able to go seven rounds. Yeah. But boxers are obviously they overtrain and they think meat like. Anyway, th th this is what the documentary talked about. It was it was wild, and seeing all these athletes that they just got top of the line athletes, like ones that were setting records, whether they be winning Olympic medals at their age, the guy who ran across the Appalachian trails a twenty two hundred mile run, yeah, he set the 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 world record for that run, um, the the heaviest weight carried by a human mm -hmm. is done by a vegan, okay. Drew Brees, like Drew Brees, oh, vegan. Nate Diaz, vegan. Yeah. The one that the guy beat Conor McGregor no on way. short notice. Yeah. Wow. Tra um, Travis uh, Travis Barker, he's vegan. Really? Yeah. Do you remember that from that podcast? Well, I, I when he was on uh, Rogan too. There was like full a full football team. I forget which NFL team. Yeah. In the documentary, that uh, is all switching to vegan. Yeah, or or a, the core a core group of them is because one of the guys on the team's wife was a chef. That uh, you know what you know what would would make this uh, this documentary more. I mean, I haven't even seen it, but they should do like a follow up with this documentary and just literally name it. This is how easy it is to go vegetarian or to eat vegetarian or something it's not easy where it's where it's just like it's showing you all the stuff to like hit these check boxes right well that's why i told chris and i was like this is great and everything but these guys all have personal chefs it's their it's their job to eat properly they're performance right? athletes yeah it's like what do i do when i miss breakfast i'm heading to a meeting i'm rushed and i go to tim hortons and i don't want to eat their beyond meat english muffin sandwich because it sucks shit yeah um, you know what I mean? Yeah. 
So uh, th- there's definitely that case to be made. But my other argument is when I did watch that Forks Over Knives documentary a few years ago when I was really struggling with my concussion and looking for anything to do, Yeah, I researched a plant-focused diet. Yeah. And it was not hard to get the amount of protein and all the shit I needed to put on weight and because I always like working out. It was yeah. not hard at all. Yeah. You just, it's hard to have a palate like you have and have interesting meals because you really have to dig deep and, and find creative ways to cook all this stuff. Whereas I don't give a fuck. I throw potatoes in a bowl with beans and avocados and I shovel it down to get the amount of calories and macros I need. You're over there fucking putting a piece of parsley on a, like, I don't know, on a, I don't even know what the fuck you make, you know, but you care is what I'm saying. Yeah. I don't, I don't even own salt and pepper. That's how little I care. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you, yeah. You, yeah. You have, you have no palate. I mean, we've spoke about that before. It's just a lack of caring. I can taste yeah. shit obviously, but when I eat at home, it's just for sustenance. It's very easy to get your sustenance from plants. Yeah. It's hard to find the, the, like the chef, this vegan chef in the documentary was whipping up the dopest vegan meals. Probably. Dude, it was unreal. I was like, if I if that was available from every shop around me. If he fucking lived downstairs and yeah. made us meals yeah, all the time. Hundred percent. I would be down for that. So like that that was my argument as well. It was you know what it was? It was just cool to fucking challenge. Because I'm the type of person that if someone tells me I should or shouldn't do something and everyone else is doing it and that's the way it's always been. That's the stuff I distrust the most. I don't know why. Just like, it's just like, even when I'm on the subway or whenever I'm doing something, anytime I see a lot of people doing the same thing, yeah. I always think like, why? Jewel? Huh? Like the jewel? The jewel? <laughs> yeah. What about it? Everyone doing the same thing. I don't, I, well, I don't understand what you mean. <laughs> Carry on with your point. I don't know, just like, if if everyone says, hey, and this is only later in life I started realizing this, but everyone says, hey, go to school, get a degree, graduate. That's because that's what they did. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm like, look at our generation and I'm like, you know, why? Like, why is that? I've seen it work for a lot of people to do different things. If someone told me you could be a YouTuber when I was in high school, mm-hmm. I'd fucking do that. You know what I mean? So how many times have we been lied to by traditional society because that's how history has done it? So when someone says, they used to say drink fucking milk all the time. It's actually That's actually a valid point, yeah. I used to guzzle it. Who drinks milk anymore? I know, it's disgusting. It actually, I almost I almost get a little sick thinking, I can, like, don't get me wrong, if someone puts milk in my coffee, I'm not like, ew, bitch. I'll yeah. drink it. Yeah. But I have, the last time I, I had a cup of milk must have been like four, oh. five, six, I don't even remember. Like 10 years ago. Like, it's, yeah. And, yeah. Ch- and cheese... I don't buy it, but I know you still like your Love cheese. cheese. Yeah. Love it. I guess it's a bit more artisan milk. It's like, it's a bit fermented. There's a bit of an art to it. It's not just straight like fucking cow titty and a thing. No. But still technically very gross. Um, If you really think about it. Same with like, same with like chicken, eggs and all that stuff. It is kind of a little gross. I mean, you break it all down. It's it's gross. In I don't get. Way. I eat them all. I eat them all. Yeah, it's fucking gross. But they were t- they were told like that's what we were told, and they used to say to people that cigarettes were healthy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I people are fucking. I'll idiots. watch. I'll watch the movie tonight. I got no issues. Also, not trying to convince you. Yeah. I, as I said, I literally ate meat all weekend. I had meat today at a tuna I, fucking pasta. I think you're pasta. an advocate for game changer. <laughs> Is it well? Oh. The new face of Game Changers. I just Travis McKenna. <laughs> I thought it was super interesting. Just no, the same I'm, way I'm kidding. I'm I kidding. thought the sleep expert was super interesting. The same way I thought UFOs yeah. were super interesting. Because you listened did you just listen to the UFO episode today? Was it today? I got through or yesterday. Yeah, no, I listened to it this this uh, well this afternoon. I got through Yesterday afternoon. Yeah, yeah, yesterday afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh and I only made it through like 40, 45 minutes. But I think you made this point last time we spoke about it that 
it was good how there was no that nonsense right at the beginning and they got right into it and the guy started telling a story um couple a couple things right off the bat one um (laughs) i don't know why but when the producer jeremy corbell steps in and starts trying to talk kind of annoys me 100 percent, and i think it annoys joe as well (laughs) Joe was like, all right, shut up, dude. Like, let me talk to the actual guy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Joe cuts him off. Joe sometimes flat out ignored him in that podcast. Yeah. If you really listen, he says something to pose a question to Joe, <laughs> and Joe ignores it and asks Captain <laughs> Fravor or Commander Fravor, or whatever. Fravor, yeah. Um, okay. First thing, I'm glad we're on the same page. Uh, second thing, this, I liked how the, the, the commander, he was, he seemed very, self-aware um, yeah you know like he was he was talking like like bob like bob lazar was talking like uh or i mean i guess he was talking like a frustrated person who saw a ufo 40 years ago and mm-hmm. no one's believed and he's been still trying to <laughs> <laughs> convince everyone yeah this guy was talking like oh this happened it's like it was like much more sort of upbeat about it and he, like, he obviously hasn't had as much of a negative experience yeah as exactly bob, as bob exactly and um a third thing um i mean obviously like these planes are a little more advanced than uh, the ones you were flying but i just i noticed how much in code he was he was speaking and like how he, like he did a really great job of explaining himself mm-hmm. um you know every time he drops something but he, like every minute like every second like in it, when he gets asked a question he's he's being like oh yeah so the datcom which stands for you know like discommunications services yeah, or he whatever. would explain what it means but he yeah. explains it, but there's like all these there's so many code words that he was speaking in and like i guess that they use frequently in the language yeah Dude, you want to you want to trip you want to trip out? Yeah. Listen to pilots talk to ATC at major airports. Yeah. It's wild, man. And can you understand it? A lot of it? All of it. Yeah. yeah. Well, all of that chat. I don't know the military stuff. Yeah. But yeah, but any anything in in commercial aviation because I'm a commercial pilot. So we learned everything up until someone hires you basically. So you learn how to how to fly in bad weather using just instruments, how to fly at night, how to fly multi-engine aircraft, how to, how to do all the chatter. Mm -hmm. Um, The only thing they don't teach you is how to fly jets because they don't own any jets and you got to be hired to, to learn that. And I think other than that, they just don't teach you like the practices of each company that could hire you, like how they do their weather briefings or how they navigate certain like what their rules are and all that shit. But a lot of the stuff, uh, when I, I like, I love listening to pilots. Yeah. It, it yeah. like, it's, it, it's like, it's like my mind jerking off a little bit that like, <laughs> it's just, it just feels good. You know what I mean? They're like, Oh yeah. Just like they use a phonetic alphabet and they're like, yeah, alpha kilo, Victor, Charlie, like, you know, coming in, uh, intercepting ILS, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they say their waypoints and I'm just sitting there like, yeah, bitch, like, <laughs> stro- like stroking my like fucking dog and off to it. But yeah, listen to pilots talk to ATC. It sounds mm-hmm. like, it sounds like gibberish. Yeah, I'll play something for you after. Okay, but moving past that, uh, the guy was pretty compelling with his with his points. Um, I thought it was cool the story that he told, but tic tac and the way it. Uh... So do you think there's UFOs? I uh, yeah. I think so. Same. He mentioned also, I don't know if you looked this up, that there was a more recent video that was taken in 2015. Did you look this up? I did it. I did a Google. <clears throat> I couldn't find it. Yeah. I didn't look very hard though. Um, because I mean the video that you obviously saw the one video that he spoke about, right? Tic Tac. Yeah. It's like very shit quality. It's just exactly what he described. Yeah. An object with nothing coming out of it. Like yeah. no like jet propulsion or rotor floating. And that just kind of zips off screen. Yeah. That they that they film for like a minute. Yeah. Nothing nothing crazy. Yeah. But like also what 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 was it then? You know what I mean? Um I didn't see the other ones, no. But the the there was other things that they talked about that if you Google it's pretty crazy. Like 
remember how he said the the time Washington D.C. got shut down by UFOs? No, I don't think I made it that far. Oh, there's like a story of like, dude, if you want to get into a rabbit hole, yeah, UFO conspiracies. Not even conspiracies, just UFO. Like, there's so much non conspiracy conspiracy UFO stuff out there. That's like the the sightings over Washington, where there's like thousands of eyewitness reports on that night, videos, jets were scrambled, people didn't know what it was, and then it just kind of goes away. Mm -hmm. That's happened like hundreds of times. There's apparently like thousands of credible people like this pilot, just believable yeah. people yeah, that have reported of being abducted. <laughs> yeah. that's That seems a little far-fetched. No. <laughs> That, well, it is. It is. It does seem yeah. far-fetched. I mean, there's a lot of credible people, like people that just, like, if you want to dive in, I haven't because I don't really care. I'll wait till one of those little fuckers show up somewhere and they'll be like, okay, I didn't waste <laughs> my time believing in front of everybody else yeah. preparing. I don't care. Like, if they come, they come. Like, there's nothing we can do. I don't, I don't need to dive into conspiracies. Um, but there's also, uh, what was the final thing? I can't remember. It's all right. Um, there, there was like, there was like a few things you could. Oh yeah, I remember now. There is this case of cows being um, abducted. Not abducted. So this is this is a quick, easy thing to Google because it's not it's not even a conspiracy. There is um, cows that get uh, drained of all their blood. Yeah. And body parts surgically removed. Why? Um, no one knows. So it's like, this is the story. Basically, there's thousands of reports uh, of cows in the, in the certain regions of the U.S. Yeah. That on big pastures, farmers find yeah. them mm -hmm. def drained of all their blood, missing bones a lot of times, missing major organs with no sign of blood around the carcass. Yeah. No sign of, like the the... Udders are removed surgically, eyes, tongue, uh, no sign of any reason, any footsteps, anything. And yeah. there's so many reports of this that the FBI in, tried to investigate it yeah. many, many, many years ago. Because this has been going on since, I don't yeah. know, the 50s or the 60s. It's an easy thing to Google that. Will, that will make you feel a little weird. Aliens are meat eaters. They're more advanced than us. They must know a thing or two. <laughs> well, they don't take the meat. Organs. They take the organs, but start harvesting organs and cow blood. And yeah, they, they cow blood is the new milk. They drink is it. Is what you're yeah. saying? <laughs> no, the the idea is is at least the the main trend I see from the most credible people, and this is only through podcasts. I've I researched none of this. The most yeah. credible people that make it to like Joe Rogan's podcast that talk about it. The main points i hear is that when people get abducted there's a lot of similarities between okay. their stories yeah often to do with for that fuzzy memory the way they describe the experience um they usually get something extracted or tested on them like semen or like like they that's what these abductees claim like they get like something taken from them yeah um and then they get placed back oh these, it's like uh it's test it's like experiments yeah, it's 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 like a rub and tug. It's except, like a rub and tug, except in space. But but again, guys get it better. <laughs> guys go up and they get jerked off. Girls get an yeah. egg removed from them. <laughs> they don't get jerked off. Yeah. Um, and then these cows just get drained of their blood. And <laughs> they get organ surgically removed. <laughs> there's no there's no humans coming back fucking deflated. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, but yeah so like there's there's commonalities but that cow one if you want to just like fuck yourself up at work just google yeah. that okay. it's it's real stories these are real reports this isn't conspiracies it's like it's like local newspapers being like who keeps killing all our fucking cows there's no evidence the sheriffs never figure it out the fbi never figured it out it's like the midwest or something yeah exactly and there's yeah. thousands of reports and there, there's always the same thing. No traces of how this could have happened. No animal bites. No nothing. 
just things removed perfectly, blood yeah. removed, no trace. It's wild. It scared me. And it's real. It's not a conspiracy. Wow. So it's just like if you piece together all this whack stuff you hear. Yeah. It's like if somebody just, which these conspiracy, conspiracy UFO people do is probably piece it all together. But if someone mainstream pieced all this together, it makes a pretty compelling case that something's going on. All these mil military stories. Yeah. All these personal sightings. How, how many Looney Tunes are out there that there's so many of these stories and a lot of them are from credible people that stand to gain nothing or lose anything. Yeah. These cows, these sightings over cities throughout history. Like, you, you know what I mean? It's, it, it's, it's kind of fucking whack. Oh, you know what? I, you just reminded me that he made a comment that Christopher Columbus uh, cited like UFOs. Corbell said that. Oh, the producer. Oh fuck. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Corbell also the way Corbell talks, you're like, shut You're like shut, shut up. the fuck up, dude. <laughs> yeah. He's like, he's like, yeah, so we have elements. We're testing elements right now. I have elements in New Mexico. We're talking about the the Bosley case, dude. And he like he like you know how he rhymes off stuff so fast? Yeah. He goes from one thing to the next. Like yeah. he's like trying to like spit out all this information. He's trying to get And you're like, man, I don't care that you think you have alien metal and like like yeah. I just want to listen to this really yeah, trustworthy guy. Yeah. guy. Like, <laughs> it's true. And he he starts citing all these stories like they've happened. He's like, like the case in you know over here, right? And that yeah. that person, you're like, I I'm not gonna Google all this. Give me one big thing at a time to Google. He's like he's like one of those like detectives in movies or TV shows that gets obsessed with like a serial killer yeah. that hasn't been found in Whoa, 10, 15 years. Aren't they always right in the movies though? Right, they're obsessed, and they're always like third phone call, third phone call. Who is it? <laughs> Give blood. Give blood. Robbie phone call counter number three. This is an epidemic, man. <laughs> three phone calls. Pretty nuts. Um, I'm on a spam phone call list. Yeah. And I get ten phone calls a day from spam numbers like VIP yeah. vacations in Las Vegas. Like just like random shit all over the U.S. Yeah, and I still don't get three phone calls during a podcast. I was doing work in your room earlier. Two people called while you were in the shower, or one person <laughs> called twice. Yeah, pretty classic. You, I don't know how you have time to talk in real life. Well, I don't. <laughs> You're on the phone all the time. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, those those are the crazy things in our world right now. Sleep more. Listen to that sleep expert on Joe Rogan, Dr. Matthew yeah. Walker. Believe in UFOs. It'll fuck your day up. Um, watch watch Commander Fravor on Joe Rogan. Um, watch Game Changers. Watch Euphoria. I might watch that tonight. I'm going to watch both of those tonight, actually. And also, uh, before we sign off, we both got big weekends coming up. Yeah, You're, you're heading down for a bachelor party. 27 person bachelor That's party in Austin, up. Texas. That's going to be nuts. And I got my sister's wedding this weekend. 27 person wedding <laughs> in Toronto. <laughs> um, I'm really so, I'm really sad about missing that. I really am. Yeah. I know. It's too bad. Um well, we'll get you next time. Yeah. They're going to have another one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, they couldn't reschedule for me. Unfortunately, no. It's booked in, and uh, I guess we we just know where your loyal loyalty lies now. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny you say that because I never got the invite, so I had nothing in my calendar when this bachelor party popped up. They said, "What are you doing that weekend?" And you know, I looked through the mail, and you know, I, I was like, "I didn't actually do that," but yeah. you know, I was like, "Oh, you know, no invites to any weddings in September or in October." So I guess I guess I can say yes to this bachelor party. I booked the flight. And then you give, oh, you can't make it? Oh, it was that weekend. Oh, Trav, that's too bad. So, you know, I'm thinking it's a little fucking suspicious if you ask me. All right, I was never invited, dude. You were you were invited. Not on paper. I, I spoke about it with them. Didn't get the evite. Well, because you had made a comment to Care that you had booked this wedding. That That's, that's how she, because the invites hadn't been sent out yet. So she sent the invites out pretty close to her wedding 
Yeah. So I only booked this flight like fairly, fairly a month close. and a half ago. Fairly close. Which is kind of tight for what invitations, right? Normally for weddings, I'd say. Yeah. Not like not a not a a hit on them. I'm just saying like normally you get you, you get them. I thought I even mentioned to you about it, it being in October. You mentioned a wedding in October, but there's a lot of days in October. Yeah, it's true. It fills out. Regardless, anyways, could have been it's, any. Of it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun weekend for both of us. Uh, and uh, we'll report back next week. I want to hear about this wedding, and there's a chance that this 27 person bachelor party in Austin goes horribly wrong or horribly right, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Uh, it's going to be action-packed. Yeah, I'm pretty stoked for you. I mean, I remember, fuck, like, dude, three days. I don't, I don't, when was the last time you partied for three days straight? University? No. Like, Since then. Yeah, but like. D- D- Damien's bachelor party. Oh, yeah, true. Okay. Damien, was another fucking, bachelor party. That was a that was a fucking three-day party and a half houseboat. We were That's in true. isolation with 10 dudes. Anything goes <laughs> <laughs> for three days on the open sea. That was wild. Um, but anyways, yeah. We'll report back in. And we will see you next. Tuesday, unless aliens abduct us in Austin. Or steal our blood and our udders. <laughs> <laughs> Later. Feeling-